Joanna, why didn't you stop me from eating that fifth pancake? I tried. Didn't you notice me jabbing your hand with my fork? Well, you should know me by now. You gotta break the skin. Ooh, somebody left us a note. Good morning. Saw you were eating. Didn't want to interrupt. Check myself into room two. Hope you don't mind. L. Gardner. You mean somebody came in off the street and, and, and checked themselves in? Oh, I remember. And L. Gardner wrote us for reservations about a month ago. I wonder if that's who it is. Don't go out on a limb, Joanna. <laughs> Joanna, if you were going to a $2,500 a plate charity dinner at the Ritz-Carlton in New York, which, of course, you aren't, <laughs> and you had to decide between two designer gowns, which, of course, you don't own, <laughs> which one would you choose? Well, obviously, the white one. Okay, you've got another shot at it. <laughs> the black one... That was my first choice, too. What, uh, what charity is it? Uh, oh, it's one of those causes. The needy, the starving, I forget which. Anyway. <laughs> the point is, we all get to dress up, eat a lot, and impress each other. Do you know the water is running in room two? Yeah, we, we have a guest in there, George. You didn't happen to catch a glimpse of whoever's in there, did you? Joanna, I'm not in the habit of peeking at guests in the shower. Not since Dick yelled at me. <laughs> oh, Staff! Hi, Michael. Hello, Stratford inmates. Uh, bad news, Bear. Starting today, the uh, Circus of Shoes will be open 24 hours a day. Who would buy shoes in the middle of the night? Ask my manager. This silly scheme seeped out of his cerebellum. It's gonna fail, just like his buy one pair, get one shoe free idea. <laughs> Poor you. Ready for tonight? Sorry, Cuppers, there's a time card with my name on it. Well, I guess there's no choice. Quit your job. <laughs> my mitts are manacled. None of the other salesmen can work tonight. Timmy's cramming for a spelling bee, and the manager has his SATs coming up. <laughs> That means I can't go to the ball. Uh, Stephanie, if it'll make you feel better, you can hang out with Joanna and me tonight and, and play Yahtzee. <laughs> well, that certainly helped. Dick, you know I would never ask you a favor unless you were around. <laughs> this dinner means mucho to my muffin. Do you think you could possibly pinch hit for me tonight? Michael, I'm not very comfortable at formal affairs. Suck in that ego, Dick. I mean, at the shoe store. No. <laughs> all, all right, all right. You, you can go to the ball. I don't want to go to the ball. I, I, I hate those things. If I can't import an escort, there'll be no more muffin on my menu. <laughs> Michael, I, I still don't think that... that don't I... make me resort to blackmail, Dick. You, you don't have anything on me. You see how pathetic I am? <laughs> and that was my trump card! <laughs> Wowee! Dick, these are 200 of the most prominent people on the East Coast. You don't say, wowee. You use words like, ah, hmm. I, I guess the, the richer you are, the fewer syllables you have to use. Oh, the Thorntons are here. When you meet Mr. Thornton, don't mention the word indictment. Uh, I try to keep my acerbic tongue in check. One more thing. When you finish eating that shrimp puff, don't sniff your fingers. I suppose I can't spit on the floor either. Dick, this isn't the Stratford. Pardon me. Have you seen Binky? Huh? Ah, there he is. And he's with Tess. Hmm. Dick. If you don't 
know the answer to a question, don't say, huh? Just toss your head back in a playful manner and laugh knowingly, like so. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should just wait in the plane. Just <laughs> smile and have a good time. Oh, damn. Libby Harcourt is here. We hate her. <clears throat> why, why, do, why do we hate her? Oh, she's one of those spoiled, snotty little rich girls. You know the type? <laughs> I, I have a pretty good idea. Her coming out party cost $50,000 more than mine. Her parents even flew in Carol Channing, who made us all sing along to Hello, Libby. I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. Libby, dear. Stephanie, darling. It's been too long. <laughs> Stephanie, your hair. Oh, do you like it? Not a bit. <laughs> oh, I see you're wearing an original Giannina Bruzzisi. Yes, and I see you're wearing the knockoff. <laughs> Have you met my escort, Scooter Drake? Hello, Stephanie Vanderkeller. Yes, of course. Libby's told me so much about you. You're the one who got smashed at a coming out party and tried to choke Carol Channing with her boa. <laughs> and this is my escort, Richard Loudon. Scooter? Hello, old man. <laughs> Did you hear that Scooter's microchip company has just been sold for $280 million? 200? Wow! <laughs> ah. <laughs> hmm. And these are my neighbors from Southampton, Kip and Anastasia DuPont. Hello. Charm. You mean the DuPonts? <laughs> Obviously, Richard. I, uh, I have your carpet in my bedroom. <laughs> your escort is just too droll. <laughs> Isn't he, though? Richard, my glass is empty. Oh, all oh, right. And while I'm getting you a, a refill, I'll try to come up with some more droll lines. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to them. Heck of a party, huh? Indeed. I don't believe we met. Colonel Reginald Trough Tipton. But call me Binky. Everybody does. <laughs> all right, all right, Binky. I'm, I'm uh, Richard Loudon. Not Sir Richard Loudon. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. Hi, fellas. What's up? It seems a puzzling phenomenon occurred. We were in the woods choosing up sides for a quick game of naked prey. <laughs> but Daryl forgot the turtle wax for the bonus round. <laughs> so we went back to the cafe where we found this. Good afternoon. Couldn't find a waiter, so I made myself breakfast. Hope you don't mind, L. Gardner. Did you happen to get a glance at L. Gardner? No, sorry. What's that? <laughs> you saw the L. Gardner in question? Well, is it a man or a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a discrepancy of opinion. Daryl thinks it's a woman, but Daryl begs to differ. <laughs> Since my brothers are known for their extraordinary gender-guessing skills, it's safe to assume that L. Gardner could only be a swing dancer from the road company of the lilting Jerry Herman musical La Caja Fold. I was so far off. <laughs> just bought the most charming little villa in Anguilla. It's only 14 rooms. I bought it for the rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard and I winter at this charming little inn in Vermont. We also spring, summer, and fall there. <laughs> Vermont, how backwoodsy. I just happen to own that charming backwoodsy inn. Stephanie is well acquainted since she is the... Oh, Richard, my glass. <laughs> I've never seen you so parched. Where 
never did you find your Richard. He's such a refreshing change from an interesting person. <laughs> well, actually, Richard is very interesting. He's just so modest. It's really such a chore to get him to chat about his incredible wealth. <laughs> oh, really, Steffi? Do fill us in. Well, you're all so well-traveled. Surely you've stayed at a Loudon Hotel. I don't believe we have. You should splurge once in a while. <laughs> Come to think of it, I believe I have stayed at a Loudon Hotel in Boca, Raton. <laughs> oh, of course. Kip and I honeymooned at the new Loudon in Portofino. <laughs> the golf course was most challenging. And so was Anastasia. <laughs> oh, don't I know. <laughs> So he's that Richard Loudon. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't there a Loudon conceptual art wing at the Whitney? What me? <laughs> Richard, darling, we're all just dying to know more about those little inns of yours. <laughs> 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 It must be absolutely thrilling to have one's name be synonymous with the word luxury. It, it, it must be. <laughs> what a delightful sense of humor. The next time we weekend in Bimini, we'll have to stay at your resort. I don't, I don't recall having a resort in Bimini. You know the one, Richard, it's the small one on the bluff. <laughs> oh, oh, the, the bluff one. <laughs> you know, Stephanie, I, I have a sudden urge to refill your glass. Would, would, you, would you care to join me? Uh, no, no, still full. Polish it off on the way. He's such an imp. <laughs> What is going on here? Why, why did they suddenly think of me as a, a hotel tycoon? Oh, you know, the social elite, they probably just assumed. They assumed I had a resort in Bimini? <laughs> I, I don't even know where, where Bimini is. Well, maybe I embellished a little bit. Maybe you lied your head off. <laughs> I was forced into it. Libby didn't find you very interesting. I don't care what Libby thinks. We hate her anyway. <laughs> is I was just trying to make you look better. I don't want to look better. I, I'm Dick, not, not, not Richard Loud. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm going to go over there right now and, and tell that to, to, uh, to, to Scooter and, and Kip and Anastasia and, and Libby and, and, and Dinky. It's Binky. <laughs> Whatever. Dick, we cannot go over there. You'll humiliate us both, especially me. Uh, excuse me, aren't you Richard Loudon? <laughs> I'm, I'm Merv Griffin? Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Richard Loudon, but you, you can, you can call me Dick. Every, every, everyone does. Uh -huh. And I'm Stephanie Vanderkell, and Dick's very, very special friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> very nice to meet you. <laughs> Say, Richard, I've been, uh, hearing your name around here all evening. Ah. <laughs> That's what I miss about having a talk show. Meeting really fascinating people like you. You know, uh, I have, I have a, a talk show, too. Ooh. <laughs> oh, there's Mort. Listen, I promised my dear friend Malcolm Forbes that I'd sing, uh, I want to go back to my little grass shack. Why don't you join me for a duet? Well, uh, I, I could do a little, little harmony. Well, that's good. Okay, uh, meet me at the Steinway. I'm gonna sing harmony with Merv Griffin. <laughs> Maybe I could sing the high parts. Stephanie, this is a duet for guys. Just Merv and me. I wanna go back to my little grass shack in Kealakaku, Hawaii. 
I want to be with all the commies and wahinis that I knew long ago. I can hear those guitars a playing, playing on the beach. Hold on now. Oh, hold on. I can hear those Hawaiians saying, Blue, bluey, cowie, I, owie, lowie. I'm determined to sit right here until El Gardner comes in. Care to join me? Aren't you being a little bit silly? Oh, right. I guess we would have more room if we sat on the sofa. <laughs> Listen! You hear that? It's him! Or her. How do I look? Fine, George. Gosh! He looks just like Michael Harris! <laughs> I am Michael Harris. Oh, for a minute there, we thought you were El Gardner. No, I'm only El Shoe Clerk. <laughs> but I could be El Gardner if the pesos are right. If you're looking for Stephanie, she's not back from New York yet. Oh, yeah, I didn't think so. You know, now that I'm selling clogs around the clock, my lunch break is midnight till one and everything's closed. Any French fries in the fryer or fresh fruit in the fridge? <laughs> I hate to hear myself say this, but I'm afraid I can find a few frozen frankfurters in the freezer in front of the fettuccine Alfredo from Friday. <laughs> Stephanie, what are we doing a, a week from Tuesday? Brooke uh, asked her, invite us to a soiree. <laughs> well, dear, you've already committed us to that yachting thing with the Trumps. <laughs> Darn, I hate to put Brooke off like this. Oh, I'm sure your little Brooke will understand. You're, you're not upset, are you? Oh, why would I be upset, Mr. Bell of the Ball? You're upset be because they like me? They only like you because they don't know who you are. If they knew the real you like I do, they wouldn't like you at all. <laughs> Richard, come quickly. We're toasting the Murdochs. Summer home. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't want to miss this. Uh, Rupert's imported some new sconces for the billiard room. Thank God. They've been waiting for months for those sconces. Wowie. To the Murdoch's summer home. Yeah. yeah. And their new sconces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Richard, seems that I finally have you all to myself. Well, uh, what, what, hap what happened to, to Scooter? Scoot is just a boy. I want you, Richard. Well, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot. There's a lot to be to be said for for boys. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm, I'm just looking for you. You're wasting your time, Libby. There's something you should know about Richard. He's not one of us. He's just a middle class innkeeper. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> What a pitiful attempt to grab attention. It's true. He's an imposter. He's as fake as the nose on your face. <laughs> this can't be. I've stayed at his hotel in Bimini. He doesn't even know where Bimini is. <laughs> Tell me it isn't true, Sir Richard. It, it isn't, Binky. I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I know where Bimini is. <laughs> Steph, uh, Steph, Stephanie is right. I'm, I'm just an innkeeper, and she's, she's a maid. A maid? My, my, my! How delicious! Oh, if only Noel Coward were here, he'd make great sport of this. <laughs> what are, what, what are you all laughing at? I mean, I'm, I'm an innkeeper, and, and she's a maid. Doesn't make any difference whether you're, you're rich or poor. I mean, when all is, when all is said and done, we, you know, we're all, we're all the same underneath. <laughs> oh, 
Malcolm Forbes. <laughs> Henry Kissinger. <laughs> Merv Griffin. <laughs> well, there goes my doubles match with Merv and the Gabors. <laughs> Don Trump's helicopter. <laughs> Stephanie, I, I can't take this silent treatment anymore. Say something. How could you humiliate me in front of my friends like that? What friends? You, you said you hated everybody in that room. That's because I felt superior to them. <laughs> now the only one I'm superior to is you. <laughs> If I embarrassed you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You're forgiven. I know how easy it is to be seduced by wealth and power. Some people can handle it with grace and dignity, and others become drooling idiots. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought you, Dick. Ap apology accepted. <laughs> Now, can, can we go inside? I am never going back in there. From now on, this balcony will be our home. <laughs> sure, it's safe. Everyone's left except the cleaning crew. Han oído lo que estaban diciendo de pobrecito Richard Loudon. Don't go away. Newhart will be right back. We fell asleep. That's El Gardner. He, she's driving away. Now's our chance. For what? If we cut through Briar's Field, we can head him or her off at Johnny Cake Ridge. George, it's seven in the morning. Hurry up. El's getting away. This is the stupidest. Hello? Hello? Does anybody ever work in this town? I should have just listened to my travel agent and gone to Jamaica. Some vacation. <laughs> I want to go back to my little shack in Kealakadu, Hawaii. Where the huma huma nuka nuka apua go swimming by. Take it, Dick. Where the uli uli kali kali hapi muli ui go swimming by.